What's up everybody? Steve here from the Whiskey Hideaway and we are on recipe number three of 50 from the Bourbon Bartender book that I got right here. And the next cocktail up is the Manhattan. So there are a couple different ways that you can make this. And as usual, I like to just kind of throw a monkey wrench in there and make it my own way. <laughs> we're going to go based on the recipe here, right? But we're going to uh, we're not exactly using the exact bourbons and the exact vermouth that they're asking for in the recipe. So let me just show you what we're going to be using today. So right now we've got this Noli Pratt um, vermouth. Now I am not very familiar with vermouth. I, I bought this bottle a while back and I do like it very much uh, for my Manhattans. Uh, we also have some premium cocktail cherries. These are from uh, Michigan, actually. Um course that's from France duh and uh, we've also got for the bitters here today we've got crude bitters uh, this is small batch bitters and this is uh, right out of North Carolina so look those up if you're interested in that and speaking of North Carolina we've also got a North Carolina rye whiskey right here for us to try this is a southern star double rye straight out of statesville north carolina uh anyway this is what we're going to be using in place of regular bourbon first off let's get our rye we're going to put two ounces in here i always like rye in my cocktails, whether it be Old Fashioned or, or, or the Manhattan. And now we've got one ounce of vermouth. It's very important that you get the measurement on this one right, because the first few times when I tried to make a Manhattan at home and I nearly didn't go by the recipe, ew, it did not taste good. All right, now we've got some bitters and it calls for about two dashes of bitters. I'm going to give a few more drops simply because this is coming out very slowly. All right. That smells really good. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and uh, shake this bad boy up. Uh, ooh, woo, okay. You know, I saw somewhere online that they make shakers like this that the top won't get frozen on. And I really want somebody to tell me where I can get one of those. All right, so we've got this all mixed up. Very nice. And last but not least, we gotta put that cocktail cherry in there. Now, don't use maraschino cherries, use cocktail cherries. Much better. The syrup in these things are like gold. Now, the Woodford Reserve cherries are really good. But if you want to go top end, get the Luxardo cherries. They're my favorite. And a little bit of that juice. Throw that in there. And then also get your cherry and pop that in there. Mm. So good. All right, guys. Moment of truth. Cheers. Mm. Oh, that's so good. You've got to get that balance correct on this one. And if you do, it's spectacular. And those bitters are really good. If you get a chance, crude, small batch bitters. Um, so good. But now these, this one right here is uh, coffee and cocoa. And that does add an extra layer of depth on this cocktail. So... Thanks for joining me for this one, and stay tuned for number four coming soon. And a big shout out to one of my viewers, Thomas, plays darts with me on occasion. Uh, thank you for reminding me to get my butt up and get on number three. So cheers, man. This one's for you.